Now we are moving on to the next topic in set theory, that's functions. Functions are pretty extensively used in programming languages. And I'm very sure by now you might have come across these functions. Today's discussion is the mathematical foundation for functions. And in this video, I'll be discussing about the definition of function, how do we identify the functions and the total number of functions. Function. Function is a special type of relation. Let's take uh, two sets, uh, maybe some A equals B and uh, Q, and B has 1, 2, and 3. Suppose I define a function from A to B. So we write it as A function from A to B. In function, this particular set is called domain. And this set is called as codomain. And relating an element of A to B, this is called as a mapping. So we can read this as F is a mapping from A to B. So basically it's a relation so i could express it something like uh, f becomes uh maybe p is mapped with one so i could write as p comma one and q may be mapped with some two so q comma two it becomes a little clumsy to understand this so we would prefer to use a pictorial representation so instead of writing like this we'll slightly change it so a elements are p and q B elements are 1, 2, and 3. Okay, now I could map it. So P we mapped with 1, and let's say Q is mapped with some 3. So this this set or this mapping has the elements P and Q. And here you see that only 1 and 3 are used. 2 has 2 is not used. So this set uh, remains same it's called as domain this particular set is called as range or the set of mappings are basically a range and these elements are called as images and these are called free images so that's how we represent the function in a picture and these are the names we generally use everywhere. Now, every mapping may not become a function. Function has certain conditions. What are those conditions? The first condition is for every x that belongs to domain, so every element of the domain must be mapped with any of the elements. Maybe p has to be mapped with 1 or 2 or 3, but definitely it should have a mapping. So every element should have. A mapping. The second condition is P can be mapped either with 1 or with 2 or with 3, like this. I cannot do this P1 and P2, this is not possible. P should have a unique image. That's it. These are the two conditions. If a mapping follows these two conditions then we call this particular mapping as a function okay we already study about relations basically it tries to connect elements of some set a to another set b right there is some a mapping basically it's a mapping now why do we need to specially define something called as a function with certain conditions is it really required and where do we use it so why do we need a function you might have already studied uh, in C programming. We generally write very, very uh, basic functions like addition, subtraction, division, right? So let's let me take a function called add, which which is adding two elements, two and three. So basically, this is a task. So what do you expect from this task? The first expectation is this should give some result. So I'm expecting a guaranteed 
result. Now, what is the second expectation? It should give an answer that should be correct and unambiguous, which means like 2 and 3 is basically 5. So, it should give it as only 5. You should not say 1, sometimes, sometimes, 20. It should not do like this. It should give one particular answer. These are the two things which you have discussed in a functions definition. There should be a guaranteed or 100% mapping. Secondly, it should give only a unique image. It should not give multiple images. I hope you are clear with the basic concept of function. Let's take some examples to test for the conditions of function. Here we have three sets A, B, and C, and there's some function f1, f2, and f3. Look at this. Is this a function? No, this is not a function. Because here, one of the element in the domain, there is no mapping. Therefore, this is not a function. Function says every element should have a mapping. Look at this. F2. Is it a function? P, Q, R, S. Yes, each element has a mapping. So, this is a function. Look at this. F3. 1, 2, 3. Each element has a mapping. But this is not a function. The reason is, you look at 1. 1 has been mapped with x. 1 is mapped with y. So, an element is having two images. Therefore, not a function. Look at this. F4. P has a mapping, Q has mapping, R has mapping, S has mapping. But you see that everything is mapped with only one particular element. This, this is definitely a function. There's no problem with it. An element in a domain cannot have two images, but an image can have multiple pre images. There's no problem with that. Here we have another function. It says that there's a mapping from x to x square. So I could map it as if, if I put one. Here it is, 1 square is 1. If I put 2, 2 square is 4. So 3, 3 square is 9, 4, 16. So every element, yes, there will be a mapping. And you see that it is mapping out only one element. Therefore, this is a function. Okay. Here we have a function g, which is x square, comma, x. Let's take uh, some random element. Maybe I take 4. So some elements is a square is 4. So what could be the element? So when I substitute 2, 2 square is 4. So this is a mapping. Do you think 2 is the only element by squaring it which becomes 4? No. Because it's a x is x is belonging to real numbers. So you will have 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, and so on. When you square minus 2, it gives 4. So 4 is actually having a mapping for two elements. Minus 2 and 2. How about 9? 9 can be mapped with 3, 9 can also be mapped with minus 3. So each element has two images. So this is not a function. So in each case, you should be testing two conditions. One is whether every element has an image. Secondly, is it having a unique image or not? Here we have a question. How many functions are possible from a set of x elements to a set of y elements? So set one of the set has x elements, other set has y elements. To count the number of functions, basically we will be using the basic principles of combinatorics. So if you have studied that, it becomes easy for you. Otherwise, uh, just go through the basics of combinatorics, then come back and uh, learn this, then it's easy for you. Okay, here I'll be using the uh, product rule. One can be mapped with A or one can be mapped with B or one can be mapped with C or any of the elements. So how many possibilities are there? So if you count here, we have y elements. So this particular one can be mapped with any of the y possible cases. How about two? Even two can be mapped with A or B or C, any of the y elements. So this also has y possibilities. Three also has same. Each and every element has y possibilities. So the number of functions will be each is an independent event so y int y into y how many elements are there in this particular set we have x elements so x times which is nothing but y 
power x. This is the total number of functions from a set of x elements to y elements.